thank you, Michael, for your prayers for our flight travels, for our little trip we had all on the the baseball team on the beach. It was rough, but we made it. We survived. Uh, but thank you for your prayers. Uh, I'd also like to. So, we were in youth class this morning. We were talking about sunrises and sunsets, uh, and how you see God's majesticness and his greatness and his beauty and his sunrise and sunset. And we're talking about even though the sun rises and even though on those cloudy days, you know, we all have cloudy days even in our lives that we can't see God and we can't see the light, but we know it's there, right? Because we guarantee that the sun's coming up and the sun's going down. Well, my Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, it's guaranteed that he's going to be by our side every day if we believe in him. And, I would, and we were discussing that, the beauties of that, and and what our talents are, and how we use those talents for God, and how important it is that our salvation, just just having our salvation isn't enough just to have it. We have to share it and pass it on and, and use that to build up the betterment of the kingdom. And we had some really good, really good responses from our youth this morning. And, uh, just keep them in prayer. We've got a couple in there that are just that are just about to break, I mean, break through. And they keep on giving me a hard time about doing oh when I'm doing the announcements. And I said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Every other Sunday, I'll let one of you guys do the announcements. And then I'll sit there and critique you. I don't know if we have any volunteers yet, but we'll keep that in prayer, too. And now I'll be quiet, and I'll start with the announcements. Uh, do we have any visitors? I guess Nick and them, you were here last Sunday. Praise God. Uh, no visitors? Okay. I'd like to remind everyone that the altars are always open. We have communion set up. If you would like to worship the Lord that way, feel free to do so. If you need any prayer covering or help, ask me, Pastor Billy, or any of these ladies probably on this area right here or this area right here. They will be glad to pray with you. Wednesday night, uh, we have food and fellowship at 6 p.m., Refreshments, and at 6:30 we start service. Overcomers is every Monday night at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. If you would like to know more about this wonderful ministry, please head over. You can go to the Welcome Center. The Welcome Center is going to have a lot of things that we can go through over here, and it's right here to my left. Um, Take it or leave it ministry. That's in the back in the kitchen. Thank you for everyone that's continued to, su to support that ministry. My kids are spoiled rotten, but I think they still get a popcorn every Sunday and take home to cook it. Uh, but they, they know that's there, and that's a great ministry to have. Mm -hmm. Tuesday mornings, men's table meeting at 10 a.m. It says, did y'all change the time? It's always been 10 a.m. See Brother Billy for more information. Thursdays, 1.30 p.m., Women's Fellowship. For more information, please head over to the Welcome Center and Miss or Miss Lee, Miss Wanda. Where is this one? She's not here today. Be in prayer for her. April 6th will be our next movie night, Playing the Flute. Now, what is that? You're going to have to go to the Welcome Center and find out. got to go to the Welcome Center and find out. He set me up for that one, I think. All right, refreshments. Pizza, popcorn. Oh, boy, they're going to have popcorn everywhere. Pizza, popcorn. Uh, need to see more information. The Welcome Center has everything you need. We really had a great time, and it's, it's a really great atmosphere. And like the first time we had movie night with the popcorn, I was like, "Oh no, my kids are and Miss and where is she at? Where is, where's our clan, Miss Gala? Where is she at? Miss Gala is like, don't worry about that popcorn. Them kids are having fun. But I'm just thankful to have Miss Gala and the way she cleans and just jewelfully works in this church. And I was gonna give her a hand clap, but I think if she's watching. I'll <laughs> Not only that, she helps in the nursery. She's just everywhere in those little places. All the names of the church family members that were involved in the house fire are in the Welcome Center. Also at this table, it um, has ages and size. Uh, it says, please consider helping this family out. April 12th is our next church council meeting. The agenda for that meeting will be posted <coughs> soon. And last but not least, we have birthdays. We have Rita Horton. Is she here? Yep, you, Rita Horton, and I have Teresa Brown, right. and Charlotte Fisher. I don't think she's here. Oh, well, 
Would you please stand up and we'll sing happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to How's everybody once again doing this morning? 
As Jason asked earlier, it is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Uh, this is our time of our service that we here at First Church of God, we believe in the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. And it's important that we have that opportunity each and every time we can get to, to just come and just you know kneel before the presence of Almighty God. There is so much power that is instilled in us as believers that we have that if we neglect that, we're really cutting ourselves really, really short. Amen? Amen? So this morning, if there's any praise reports that uh, answered prayer or something that God has just truly blessed you with this week, uh, please, Bobby. Amen. Well, um, I had a colonoscopy done, and uh, I had one little polyp, but it was nothing major. And when they dissected the part of my colon, they saw no inflammation, no scar tissue, so it's all completely great. Great God. Let's go. I just want to say that you want to be serious. I was reading the Black Lives Matter. Very little pain. She's still trying to. She kind of. <laughs> Everything went fine. Praise the Lord. I had my three grandchildren for spring break, and they brought so much love and happiness into my home. I was so happy to have them all week. It amen. was a true blessing from God. Amen. 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 Yes, I went for the doctor on my leg. I do have blockage in both my legs. He said no surgery for right now that I wouldn't be praying on. Okay. Yes, sir. I had five whole awesome days away with this company. That is pretty good. Brother Woods. Miss Joey. that we want to lift up. Richard, obviously. Yes, Ms. Sharon. I need continued prayers for the main family. The Kanto has just stricken their family in so many directions. It's not even funny. And they need all the prayers and comfort and support they can get. Okay. Anybody else got a prayer request? Yes, Ms. Sharon. Continue to pray for Earl. He has thank you for a week. And also, my sister-in-law, Erlen. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Richard. I'd like to let everybody know my mother passed this past Monday. 
so myself and family can use prayers. I'd also like to thank Brother Billy and Lisa for coming by and being supportive. And uh, there was flowers sent from the church, so I want to thank you all for that. Amen. Thank you, Brother Richard, for letting us know. Yes, Ms. Sharon. For my daughter, she had COVID, and sometimes she had a really bad cough. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Joyce. We're here from Wanda. She's not feeling very good. And then she's in the not well. She's still going to be more sick. I think she's going to have to be blocked. Well, certainly keep us in your team prayer. Anybody? Yes, Ms. Sharon. Okay. She's not going. You're at the right place. No, sir. Anybody else? Yes, Jesus. Uh, I want to be requesting prayer for the Rollins family. They had a, they had a, a baby named Jordan Eli. Uh, he had some problems with him. As he was doing a head take and C-section, and he passed away. And his mom and the whole family are just devastated. This is the second baby that he has. They just slipped them up in there. No, sir. No, sir. Anybody else? If you're able to this morning, could you please stand and join us in prayer this morning? You know, we have an amazing God. And we can rejoice in all the things that he gives us and his blessings. But in all honesty, this life can be hard. Amen? But I'm so thankful that I have a God that we can come to, a father, a spiritual husband, if you will, that can shelter us and protect us. And this morning, if you're broken and you're needing him, I encourage you to come and just spend some time at the altar. You know, this is the time that we take to spend at the altar. <clears throat> we have open communion here. If you want to take communion with your Lord and Savior, that's between you and him. Please do at your discretion. <laughs> Father God, we just come before you and we, we want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for your life, for your love that you give us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we also want to thank you for give us, giving us the strength to endure through hard times, Heavenly Father. Giving us the, the, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we praise you for all the praise reports this morning, and we, we lift up these petitions to you as well, Father God. And Heavenly Father, we stand on your promises this morning that we find in your word, because your word is truth and your word is love. Lord, be with each and every request that has been made this morning. We love you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
elders of the church, Miss Sharon has asked that she can be anointed with oil and prayed over this morning. If you believe in the power of prayer, could you come and join us in prayer this morning? If we could, can we also pray over Miss Nicole? in the room here. It's just you and God. And you're singing praises straight to Him. Uh, one thing pastors always taught me is to get ourselves out of the way and let God be first. And God be the only one. We're only singing to an audience of one. Right? And that's Jesus Christ. So we're going to have a little fun with this one. Uh, our new member is going to kind of do the baseline, I guess you would say. So, um, it's page 84 in your book, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. And uh, the men, y'all got the bottom line. So, I, I need y'all to, to help out, because I know Michael, bless his heart, he's scared to death, and I don't blame him. <laughs> I don't blame him, but he's, he's good. He's, he, he's in practice, he was amazing. So, we're just going to have a little fun. If you would stand, if you can. And let's sing to an audience of one. Just a little talk with Jesus. I once was 
Thank you. 
today and, and it's been on my heart all week and my goodness the, the week that I've had to for this message not to be 
presented, if you will. But I'm here to tell you this morning, today's sermon is called, He Cares for Me. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles, y'all bring your Bibles to church this morning? Yes. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to read verse 6 and 7. The word of God says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Father God, we just thank you this morning for this time that we have, this opportunity to, 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 to just bask in your presence, Heavenly Father, collectively as, as the body of Christ. And Lord, I pray that once again in agreement with Brother Tim Bain's prayer this morning that, uh, that I get out of the way, Heavenly Father, that you have full reign here and where we come to praise and honor and worship you. If anything is is this said, Heavenly Father, that you use it for your authority and your ability, Father God, to bring forth what you would have brought forth through the Holy Spirit, through the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that hearts be open this morning, that ears be open this morning to receive what you have to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't have a long sermon this morning, but I know it's a very important and powerful one that somebody, I don't know who you are, but hopefully you know who you are, needs to hear this. The Lord cares for me this morning. And I'm not talking about me, just me this morning. I'm talking about you this morning. Amen? And there's a lie straight from the devil this morning that he's been telling a lot of us. That we are isolated and we are alone in our problems and we are all alone in our struggles and we're alone in our trials and tribulations. I'm here to tell you this morning that is a lie straight from hell. Right. There is a father in heaven that loves you and cares for you deeply and intimately. And somebody needs to hear that this morning. You know, too many times we think maybe I'm not... Worthy, or I'm not, you, Brother Billy, you don't know what I've done in my life. I've gone too far. You don't know the problems and the situations that are going on in our household right now. You don't know the, the, the things that I have to deal with being bullied, being picked on a, on a daily basis. Brother Billy, you don't know. But I'm here to tell you that is a lie straight from hell, and there is a God in heaven that loves you and cares for you deeply and intimately. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. I love the Psalms. We were talking about in Sunday school this morning how if you're doing a devotion or if you're doing something like that, you can go to Psalms because you can easily make a, a devotion out of that. Deuteronomy, not quite so easy. Amen? That's what we're talking about. If, if Guys, if y'all are missing Sunday morning, Sunday school, you really need to come because... It is awesome what is going on in there. Amen. Brother Royce, thank you very much for stepping up as the Sunday school teacher. You know, but if, if we look at what Psalms 146 says, Psalms 146 says this. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. While I will sing praises unto my God, while I have any being. In three verses, all he is telling him is that we're just going to praise God this morning. Amen? He is worthy of our praise this morning. There's something about when people, God's people get to praising God, something happens in the, in the spiritual realm. Amen? Something, I think God likes us when we're actually going, hey, you know what, God, we are thankful. And you, you are worthy of our praise. There's something about God liking that going, wow. Them are my kids, and that's what I designed them for. Amen? To praise and worship and give him all glory. The psalmist started the first three verses. I'm not going to do nothing but sing his praises. And then he, he, he says something. He says, 
Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. <clears throat> Excuse me. His breath go forth and returneth to his earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that God of ja that the God of Jacob for his help, who his help is the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all therein, which keep it true forever. You look at that verse right there, and it tells you, you know what? When we put our trust in men or princes or even presidents or anything like that, have you ever put your trust into somebody and it go wrong? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? The fact of the matter is, is people hurt people, unfortunately. And hurt people hurt people. But I'm here to tell you, as the psalmist was saying, this God that we talk about created the ocean and the sea and the stars and the sun. And we can put our full trust in Him because why? He cares for us. Amen? We're talking about the one who designed everything. We're talking about the one who designed your very atoms that are in your body. Amen? We're talking about the one that gave you the breath that you very well are breathing this morning. If I was going to put my trust into anything, wouldn't you think that would be it? Amen? This is what this God does. He executes judgment for the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raised them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Did you catch the long list of folks that, that are in Psalms 146 that God cares for? The very first person he does is he executes judgment on the oppressed. Man, let's just be honest right now that as Christians, as believers, are y'all feeling the pressure of the world on you? Y'all feeling it, right? And if we didn't have a God that we knew that was real, that we could come to each and every day, let's just be honest, Christianity would be kind of awkward and weird, wouldn't it? But we know that we know that we know that there will be a day of judgment. And then all the wrong oppression that we're going through. And guys, let's be honest with you. In the United States, it's getting awkward and weird, but comparatively in the world, we ain't felt no oppression yet, to be honest with you. But he does execute honest judgment. What else was in this? He gives food to the hungry. Y'all ever been hungry? I'll be honest with you. I've been stomach bubbly, grumbly hungry. But I ain't never actually been hungry. You know, you can live out of a dumpster in the United States. And, and, and live more wealthy than 80% of the world. And that's the truth. But what it says is if you are hungry, he feeds you. Amen? Why is that? Because he cares for you. The Lord looses the prisoners. Now, how many of y'all ever been in... No, don't raise your hand on that. <laughs> but let's be honest. We've been prisoners before, if not just in a physical jail. But have y'all ever been in bondage before? I've been in bondage, all sorts of bondage. Hatred, bitterness, addiction, alcoholism. But he loosens the prisoners. He releases the prisoners according to I am so thankful that I can come to my God and get all that chain and bondage and Drear, gone. Amen? Amen? The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. Now, I don't think I've ever been physically blind before, but He does open the eyes of the blind. And when He gives you revelation of His Word, oh brother, does He open the eyes of the blind. Amen? Amen. 
and gives you wisdom and understanding far beyond that your, your natural ability can even give you. I'm telling you here now by testimony, what I do up here is only by God. Anybody knows me knows what kind of country bumpkin I am that just, uh uh-uh. It's only by his grace and his grace alone that I'm able to do what I'm able to do. He opens the eyes of the blind. He raises them that are bowed down. Raises them that are bowed down. He's talking about healing the cripple. We have testimony of here this morning. How the Lord is healing me. I love that accurate statement. Because sometimes he can do the miraculous. I've seen it, guys. I've seen it. But most of the time, the way he he, 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 he wants to heal us is through a process. Amen? And it's a healing process. Because if he always gave us the healing, would you not appreciate the suffering? We talked about that again this, mo- this morning, didn't we, Brother Royce? And he has a healing process for us. But the fact of the matter is, is he cares for each and every one of us. It says, The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserved the stranger. The strangers. Now, I don't know if y'all ever been to a foreign land or anything. We got to somewhat go to a foreign land, Hawaii. And boy, we were strangers. Amen. But he preserved us. He kept us. Over in Hawaii, all we had to do was to fully depend on him. And sometimes, even in your own skin, and I'm going to say this and bump and run on it, you may feel like a stranger in your own skin. You may not be comfortable with yourself and you feel isolated and you feel like an alien. And I'm here to tell you, if that's the way you feel this morning, I got good news for you this morning. He cares for you. Amen. He says, the, He relieveth the fatherless and the widow. You know, sometimes we, we, we get that father word mixed up because of, of the past that we've had. You know, I, I, I've had a, a, a natural father that passed away at six. I had a stepfather that's in prison now. So I, I haven't really had that father experience. But I'm here to tell you, he cares for the fatherless and becomes the father to the fatherless. Yeah. If you've never had a physical father, I'm here to tell you right now, you have a heavenly father that loves for you intimately and cares for you more than you would ever dream or imagine. He says he's also released the widow. We have widows in here that can have a testimony to that right here and right now. That if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God, they wouldn't know how to go through day to day. Because he becomes the husband of the widow. Amen? Not only is he the father, he's the husband. He's the one that we come to Why? Because it's just we prayed this morning. He cares for us. And he shelters us. You know, maybe you're thinking, well, okay. That's a long list. And he cares for all them folks. But but I still don't find myself in that category, Brother Billy. Psalm 34, verse 18 and 19 says this. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as to be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Can y'all say all? All. Y'all looked up the Greek word all, right? You know what the Greek word all means? All. All. (laughs) It means all. It means everything. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. He says, they're near unto them that are of a broken heart. Y'all ever had a broken heart? Oh my goodness, it does not feel well at all, does it? But what's amazing about 
the relationship that we have because of some, a God in heaven that cares for us is during that time of brokenheartedness, that's where we find the most healing and the most presence of all, Almighty God. Have y'all ever experienced that in a broken heart? Amen. In a contrite spirit, you know, I, I, I concorded that word contrite. That means, contrite means a deep sorrow or a repentative heart is what it means. Uh, somebody that's in like so much uh, regret or shame, if you will. And sometimes the very acts that we do can possibly cause that broken heart, right? So I'm going, why did I ever do that? Why did... The Word of God says that He cares for you. If that's even in this morning. You know, several times through these scriptures that I shared, maybe you got hung up on where it was talking about the righteous. And because even this one that we were reading earlier, it says, but the wicked will be brought to naught, basically. Maybe maybe you're hung up there. Well, that's, that's for the goody-goody Christian guys, but I still got too much struggle and... and and I'm the furthest thing from right standing. And I'm the wicked one that he's talking about oppressing. And I'm the wicked one that he's talking about. Guys, I got good news for you. Amen. And John 3.16 says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. Can y'all say whosoever? Whosoever. Believeth in him. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? Amen? When you look at that, when you realize what took place at Calvary, this is because I am not a righteous man because I'm Billy Pearson and I'm your pastor at First Church of God. What makes me a righteous man is I was a full-blown sinner headed straight for hell that accepted Jesus Christ's payment on the cross because he lived a perfect life, went to Calvary, died for our sins, paid the sin debt payment, and resurrected again, is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And I said, yes, Lord, I accept what you gave me, and only what you gave me, and that's what made this wicked man in right standing with Almighty God. Amen. And I'll say it again this morning, loved ones, it's not nothing special for me. I just accepted it, and I get to shout about it. Amen? Amen? This is offered to each and every person. Why? Because he cares, go like this, guys, for me. For me. And you're included in that. For God so loved the world that he was willing to die for us. And what makes us righteous, what makes us in that, and when, when we truly understand what, what had happened, we can we can get a glimpse of it. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. If you accepted Jesus Christ and you live your life according to a repentant of life following him, guess what? You're going to slip up in this world, but the fact of the matter is you are in right standing with Almighty God, which makes you righteous. Not because of what your pastor says, but because of what the Word of God says. Amen. Why did he do that? It's in John 3.16. For not just he loved us, loved ones. Listen to this. He so loved us. Now, you've heard me say this before. That one little word magnifies that he not only cares for us, but he deeply, intimately cares for us. And when your mother forsakes you and your dad forsakes you, the word of God says, I will bring you up. When your friends betray you, when everything comes against you, when, when the world and society is going the opposite way, I am going to take care and provide for you. The humbling before Almighty God 
is simply you coming to Him. That's what humbling means. Too many times in pride we say, no, God, I got this. I've, taught, I've been taught all my life to pull myself up by my bootstraps and keep moving forward because I'm tough and I'm ornery. We've been taught that, guys. We have. Jason, you've been taught that? Yes, sir. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is I need to humble myself and go, God, I need your help. I need your strength. I need your love. And what happens is you think them bootstraps were tight and you pulled on them. Oh, brother, wait until he pulls on them. Amen? Amen. He gives you such a supernatural ability to go through and get through the worst and toughest times. But what it takes is humbling ourselves before the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he will exalt you, not you exalting yourself. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 4 through 14 through 16 talks about why a believer, I can do this. Listen to this, guys. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Check out what verse 15 says. It says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we were, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly. Can y'all say boldly? Boldly. Unto the throne of grace, that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Boldly is not arrogantly, loved ones. Boldly is free and open to come before the presence of my Almighty God. We don't have to be like the courageous lion that was... Uh, going to the wizard behind the curtain. Ooh, you know. No. He died for our sins and he loves us dearly. And we are his children. And we are his creation. And we are his very thing that he loved and poured his life into. Willing to give his son to die for us. We have that right to say, Lord, I need your help and I need your help now. That's boldly love. That's bold. You have that freedom. Why do you have that freedom this morning? Because I'll say it again, and somebody maybe on Facebook, maybe here in the congregation needs to hear this. He cares for you. And once again, everybody, he cares for me. Amen? Would you please stand? This morning, loved ones, as we do another altar call, and like, like you already know, these altars never close. When I say these altars are open, that's just saying here's another opportunity. If I could get everyone's eyes closed this morning. And nobody's looking and nobody's going to judge you, nobody's going to bother you in any way, shape, or form. But if we were to honestly admit to ourselves this morning, Lord, I'm feeling alone in this battle. And it's oppressing me hard. If you can admit that this morning, just raise your hand. If uh, you need to feel his presence and know that he cares for you, I encourage you, loved one, this morning to take this opportunity to lay it down at his feet. These altars are open. I implore you, won't you come? Won't you come?
the days you had were not enough when you said goodbye. And to all of the people with burdens and chains, keeping you back from your life. You believe that there's nothing and there is no one who could make it right. There is hope for the helpless, rest for the weary, love for the broken heart. There is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing, to meet you wherever you are. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. That's struggling just to hang on. They lost all of their faith in love. They've done all they can to make it right again. Still, it's not enough. For the one who can't break the addictions and chains, you try to give up, but you come back again. Just remember that. You're not alone in your shame and your suffering. There is hope for the helpless, rest for the weary, love for the broken heart. There is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing to meet you wherever you are. Cry out.